The Raider Art Show is sponsored by Harrow Artist. Log on to HarrowGeorge.com. Harrow Artist features notable of the amazing comments, drawing videos, covers, and more. Make sure you subscribe to Harrow's YouTube channel called The Harrow Network, where you will get drawing video updates from Harold himself. Check out Harold's social media on Facebook, Twitter, and and Instagram, at Harrow Artist, of course. Log on to HaroldGeorge.com. Radar Art from the Radar Art Show. This is episode two of the Radar Art Show. Now, uh, first off, I want to say thank you guys for staying here on this channel, you know, sticking in here. I'm um, sorry we're a little bit running a little bit late. You know, I've been on a hiatus for like a couple weeks, but I really appreciate you guys, you know, stay, you know, staying in contact on YouTube and especially social media. Uh, so like and subscribe below if you're new here. It, you know, it really means a lot. I also wanted to give it a shout out to some of my friends who have been uh, reaching me out recently, like uh, Mob Boss, Mad Max, uh, Blitz Chick. David Michaels, uh, especially Eric Schanger Howie, uh, that I've known for years over in Oakland. Uh, I talked to him recently on the phone, uh, recently over at Sacramento, and he, he said he was doing well. You know, he was eating well, as uh, you know, focusing on his family. You know, he has some like you know bills to pay over there. You know, to, uh, trying to be focused. And uh, yeah, I, I, I was so glad you know talking to him again, like since 2008 as a kid. You know, the last time I've been seeing him at the games uh, with Violator over in the 50 yard lights at the tunnel scene in section 117 so that was great you know and um especially a spike you know mark shanger he's doing well you know he has a daughter over there in sacramento uh focusing on his family as well and you know i just can't believe it you know he was sending you know uh, how he was been sending me some of the envelope uh you know i was i was sending him a letter you know i gave him appreciate what he has done for the raider nation you know guys for the raider nation for a long time so um that 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 was a special thing for me for the envelope for him like you know with the poster and stuff um the poems and um you know yeah that that's great now before i get started on the raider news um me personally I just don't have any plans for like any events to going on for the Raider Nation to attend uh, this year, but uh, recently I went to the um, over at Bakersfield. Uh, we went to the summer camp that I attend uh, to go see Max Crosby to get an autograph. So yeah, that was fun for me, and you know like the fans were there. Uh, not the black hole though, but like the fans, you know, some of my friends that I've known for many years, um, uh, Vicey Raider, Veronica, uh, she attended there, you know, it was it's such a great thing to see her again, uh, I haven't seen her since the last game in Oakland in 2019, uh, she was helping us out with the, uh, you know, my mother's booth for the uh, Max Crosby's autograph from fans, you know, uh, like the fans are like lining up from the uh, uh, numbers of tables and, you know, like the, the longest line, you know, that, that that's just crazy, it's like going to the games again, you know, uh, you know, they were lining up, you know, signing the autographs from him, and, um, uh, he had, uh, he had an autograph for me, like, I, he, uh, Veronica gave my helmet to him, you know, signed the autograph on my helmet, you know, that's, that, that's, that's, uh, that's amazing, like, he's a new guy, I think he had been playing the Raiders since, uh, in Oakland days, before they moved, um, because, like, Max, at the time, he was gonna be, like, uh, scheduling to go to the plane to go somewhere, uh, in Vegas, or somewhere, like, any, uh, city that he was going to attend to, you know, be, uh, like, 
like a busy schedule for him. So yeah, I I gave him like um one of my uh, you know one of his uh, manager to the uh, training card. I gave the training card to the manager. You know, give him appreciation. Uh, like not a letter, but like you know training card. Like I said, uh, that was good for me. And uh, you know after that we had a, like a little party. Uh, the bands you know or DJs were just you know having a great time. You know I ate hot dogs and stuff like that. Uh, the next morning Veronica, you know he went uh. We went together uh, the breakfast, uh, like the um, in Bakersfield before we left. So that's the thoughts for you know you know that's the amazing event that I went you know over at the summer kickoff. I think for the first time I went there uh, because I went to the uh, Black Hole uh, rally, the last one in 2019 over at Oakland. Uh, I've been to like the Raider Vance convention, which you know that's that that's the thing from the for me back then in Oakland, you know. That's the thoughts for me, you know, like, that's amazing event that I went to. So, enough with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the news. Uh, the first news, uh, we're hoping to celebrate the uh, 4th of July of this month for the um, uh, appreciation of the people that served the country and, you know, saving the country for us uh, with the armies and, you know, like the Navy that served. Uh, give appreciation, especially, you know, like the uh, fireworks that, you know, people are celebrating with the uh, 4th of July, uh, even like hot dogs as well, you know, but like for me personally, I am, a, I am American, but also the uh, Mexican American, if people don't know, because uh, I come from a family background of the uh, Mexican uh, here in California, um, uh, like, for, like for some reason, like, um, there has been a lot of like Raider fans that are like more percent of like the uh, Mexican, uh, Mexican Latinos or especially African, uh, but like for like uh, Latino Mexican, it's like I, I kind of feel that like feel that way when I see it in the black hotel gates. Like the more culture it is, uh, because like in the LA days, you know you have the NWA and stuff like for the uh, you know LA for the Raiders, like the culture, like the gangster gangster rap and stuff like that. But like in Oakland, it's more like Latino like, more kind of a culture, like, more Raider fans than, like, uh, regular white people that can, you know, be, like, a diversity into this kind of a culture party and stuff like that, because that, that's me, that means a lot to me, like, it, it can be, like, a proud, proud thing to become a Mexican-American, uh, over at the Bay Area, so, yeah, like, the 4th of July, um, uh, yeah, it's going to be pre uh, pretty excited. Like, the fireworks are going to be starting. I'm not sure about, like, the big one because, of, like, the virus that is going on right now with the social distancing. But, like, I heard some of, like, the, the businesses are starting to open up uh, pretty soon, like, in California or in Las Vegas. You know, like, everything's, all, like, uh, slowly opening up, like, the... Um, businesses and uh the events concert generally and stuff like that you know like that that um we're hopefully we're going to be looking for and uh see what's going on for you know all of us and so uh yeah that'll be cool you know that's that's just my thoughts about it so in other news um this is interesting uh this article right here last year on three news in vegas um what i read is that um there has been like 110 pound mountain lions that is going on uh, visiting over at the Summerlin, there was a wild animal that was coming to visit. So, uh, the guy named uh, Chambi Douglas, who uh, owns the backyard house, uh, he uh, recently went to the um, to the backyard, uh, chicken, you know, stuff and going on like the bunnies and stuff. And ultimately, he just saw like the face to face of mountain lions, like behind the fence, uh, like you know, like react to it in that kind of a Saturday morning and this is what it says like what he he was telling the news is like saying uh she didn't growl or anything but she was panting like she was hot and that's what he says and he also says it was really strange she was just look at me and she didn't budge or anything so yeah it was kind of a shock for him you know like seeing them like in the fence like like the mountain lion when they call the animal patrol you know like um going to like attack you know uh, putting it back into the uh I forgot that place was. Uh, oh yeah, Spring Mountains over in the uh, Nevada and Vegas. So yeah, uh, you know, like for me personally, when I like when I really discover like any mountain lions over at the California or in Nevada, like any mountains like behind it in the east, um, it it's just kind of a weird experience. Like when you when you like when any like mountain lions go into the house like neighborhoods like and stuff like that, you know, trying like to crash like any like a glass or doors and stuff like that you know it kind of like have people freaking out and about it um 
you know, I didn't have, like, any, like, in my, in my area in the Stanislaus County, but there was, like, once, like, one time, like, or twice at a time when I was in high school, like, there were some, like, um, mountain lions over at, like, some of the, like, the ranches and stuff, like, they were trying, like, briefly, like, hiding, like, you know, enjoying the area, when, like, one in the, when people discover it, you know, they were kind of a shock, you know, calling the animal patrol, like, you know, mountain lions, like, thinking, like, mountain lions become, like, more predators for the, uh, bunnies, or any kind of, like, a, a little animals and stuff, when, like, the, uh, mountain lions come into, like, the predator and stuff, um, that's the, that's the weird thing for me, like, when I discovered these kind of a wild animals, like, in our lives, so, it, 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 it kind of, it kind of gets scary at first, but you kind of get used to it, like, you know, when you, when you see these kind of a situation with these, uh, wild animals like um you just can't even like help it you know you just kind of like run away or just get, like call someone for the uh uh for like the backup and stuff like this kind of a uh get rid of this kind of like the wild animals over at like in the uh, mountains and you know in the uh especially like spring mountains and stuff like that so yeah for me i you know whenever it comes to like in vegas again or anywhere like in the allegiance stadium um that, that would be a bummer, like, maybe a little bit problem when, you know, like, when any Raider fans will go in, uh, to the Legion Stadium, like, or tailgating there, they'll, they'll might be witnessing, uh, witnessing for that, um, just keep in mind, you know, be, uh, be aware with that, you know, with these, uh, mountain lions. Now, for this Raider news, um, I wanted to give you guys my thoughts about this current wide receiver player named Henry Rush the third, uh, that we drafted him back in last year for the uh, Raiders in the NFL draft. So, uh, what I gave a thoughts about him was as a as a wide receiver, um, he's kind of like a perfect fit for the uh, the Raiders, and um, you know it was his biggest day uh, for his highlight. Uh, he runs well, like as fast as he can, uh, just catching the ball from a car that throws the ball at him, and. Um, and he, like, in the highlight, he had, like, more, like, like a couple of the touchdowns, like, not a lot, but a couple, uh, and then he, th like, Carr thinking about him, Ruggs, is, like, um, he could be, like, a perfect fit for, like, any other wide receivers that can, uh, that can ever be like that, because, um, for example, like, uh, Antonio Brown, um, another wide receiver, a former, uh, back in 2019, when, um, he, for most potentially, you know, he got ditched with the Raiders, uh, because, you know, he, he wasn't, like, a proud ra uh, Raider, or, you know, he's not a Raider to me, in my opinion, but, um, you know, he was, he was playing all the way from, like, other NFL teams, like, Pitts, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, New England Patriots, and currently, he's on the, uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, which he, uh, won the Super Bowl, like, all the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers won the Super Bowl from 30, uh, 31 to 9, uh, that we, uh, beat the Kansas City Chiefs, and, and then all of a sudden, Tom Brady, uh, like his best friend, um, they were having a celebration over there in Florida, um, cause I, and like, the funny story about it is that, you know, on the boat, Tom Brady was, like, throwing the trophy, the, uh, LV trophy to the, uh, other people in the boat, uh, kind of have people freaking out about it, like, you know, like, um, it like almost like breaking it and like not try to break it but like it's just like it's funny because he was like drunk and stuff like that and it's just like wow wow like i can't believe tom brady just did that for all of us and uh yeah that, that that's that's kind of a funny but like back to the uh rugs um i can't wait for what he's gonna be doing as a wide receiver for this season uh I, you know, I'm, I'm going to be looking forward for him, like what he does for the plays, uh, have a better play when, uh, Derek Carr comes up with the great ideas for the, uh, offensive line, uh, to me, in my opinion. Now, I would like to talk about the, uh, entertainment news right here. Uh, this is a big one. Uh, one of the biggest bands in the rock history, Guns N' Roses, are going to be playing at the Allegiant Stadium on the Friday of August 27. So, uh, like maybe in the night. And we can't wait to see how it goes for the uh, Guns N' Roses. So um, the ticket prices were going up like around June 12th uh, a couple weeks ago. So I'm not sure if it's sold out for anybody who wants to attend the concert. So it might be like more expensive, like $100 or thousands, like in the in the lower seats in the bottom. Um, like the maybe like the any areas in like any Allegiant Stadium are going to be is going to be like a hundred dollars. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I just don't know what to say about these kind of a t uh, ticket situations. So um, and they also uh, the Raiders have been posting on 
you know, tweet, like Twitter, they posted something about Guns N' Roses. Uh, they said, uh, hashtag Raider Nation X at Guns N' Roses. Um, they are coming to rock at the Allegiant Stadium on August 27. So, uh, this picture right here, uh, that, that looks kind of a cool. You have, like, these three, uh, one of the musicians that, you know, uh, wearing their helmet. It's like an artwork of the, uh, you have the Raiders, uh, Raiders logo right there in the middle. Um, man, that is sick right there. Like, that, that's kind of amazing because, like, I, I don't know. Like, you know, I don't think there's, like, any Guns N' Roses. Like, they were playing at the, uh, Oakland Coliseum back in the day. But, um, I mean, we play music, like, about the, uh, Guns N' Roses during the, uh, Raider games and stuff like that. And, you know, they were playing, like, Welcome to the Jungle and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, there was, like, ACDC that played at the, um, uh, Oakland Arena, which, uh, you know, my parents went to attend there back around, like, 2008, uh, the, the first concert I went was at the, uh, 2009 over at the San Jose, the, um, that concert for the ACDC, uh, which, that, that's kind of cool, amazing thing, I mean, we were sitting in the bottom of the, uh, seats, you know, like, close to the, uh, stage, and that, that's pretty amazing, like, you have the train up there, it's just, like, you know, rocking, like, anything that's cool, like, any concert I went to is just, fantastic like that that's the first time i ever went to uh see acdc and see uh angus young playing guitar on the other hand uh there's going to be some wrestling going on at the allegiance stadium and that is wwe SummerSlam, which that's going to be held at the allegiance stadium on august 21st before guns and roses concert at 5 p.m in the evening so yeah that's going to be their first time wrestling going on the allegiance stadium so um uh, the ticket prices for that is was passed June twenty, uh, June eighteenth, like more like a hundred or thousand uh, dollars expensive stuff. Um, yeah, it you know fans over there are gonna be you know enjoying watching like you know fake wrestling, which I would even say it, but like not like a real one, but like fake. But yeah, wrestling is something like you know I used to watch back as a kid. Um, around, like, maybe, like, 2009 with, you know, my grandfather, uh, just enjoying watching the wrestlers, you know, match, like, you know, fighting, like, the wrestling stuff, but, um, I stopped watching wrestling recently around, um, 2012, which, you know, I just didn't have, like, any interest in wrestling anymore, uh, you know, for me, like, personally, but, um, what I heard, um, May, uh, Kelly Kelly, uh, she was attending the, uh, Legion Stadium for the, uh, tour, uh, which, that's kind of amazing, like, she went to see around, like, any places inside the Allegiant Stadium, like, the, lo uh, locker rooms and stuff like that, um, got to see the concert, I mean, no, 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 DJs, uh, clubs and stuff, yeah, that's, that, that's pretty amazing for her, but, um, so the Guns N' Roses and WWE SummerSlam will be, you know, held at the Allegiant Stadium around the August, so, um, uh, I'm not sure about the EDM, uh, DJ concerts going on somewhere, on the Allegiant Stadium, because I, you know, I heard something like, uh, Dead Mouse, uh, will be performing over there, uh, maybe some other one, because, well, we're supposed to be having, like, a concert at the Allegiant Stadium last year, but, uh, due to the pandemic that stopped them, uh, like, something like a country band that we're going to be performing, and, you know, I'm not really sure about, um, which name they are, but, uh, uh, hopefully the pandemic will not stop them, you know, like, will not stop them, you know, just, uh, stop performing the concert, you know, uh, taken away, but, you know, it, it will continue to be going. Like, uh, when the, everything is uh, open back up, uh, everybody's going to be together again, you know, having some fun, like, enjoying the ride, uh, watching some concerts and stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, for me, I can't wait to uh, go see any concert uh, generally. So, my last news right here, um, I want to talk about something about, like, this kind of a Derek Carr situation that um, there's going to be, like, some rumors, like, if he's going to be leaving uh, the team this year or not. Because um, some Raider fans out there are, like, bashing or, you know, hating Carr that much because, like, they think, oh, Carr is not the best player or Carr is not, the like, the great quarterback in any of our, you know, our team for, like, any season. So, um, you know, to me, my thoughts about Derek Carr is that, you know, he's he's really a uh, well guy to me. Um, we drafted him around 2014 at the Oakland. Um, you know, the first time I met him was at the, uh, Ricky Sports Theater and Grill. We we're having, like, the, uh, Raiders Booster Club. Uh, he was, you know, he was a real guy. You know, we brought some of our friends, you know, get an autograph from him and, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, his career that he was playing from Fresno, uh, from Bakersfield. And, um, 
you know, like for this year, I just I just don't blame Carr for this kind of a situation. I mean, like it's kind of hard for him, you know, being as a quarterback. You know, he has to change like different plays for the offensive offensive line for the uh, our team, like these kind of a players, and it's just like he's not doing well just like last year like he was not like playing so well with his um his arms like he can't throw the ball well to the like wide receivers and stuff but um I know he had broke his uh broke his leg around 2016 uh with the last game um he you know recently had um, broken his uh pinky got hurt and um you know I just I can't even bash him or complain about him or you know offend his uh, relig- uh religious beliefs but um it, you know he he's a well guy you know he can he'll try to make it for the last year like this season uh with the last contract deal for the uh, um, uh, to be played with, so, um, you know, I know he has his family, which that's good, you know, I, I think he believes he lives in, uh, Las Vegas, so, uh, if you ever got, you know, uh, run into him, or you want to get an autograph from him, uh, that's fine, so, uh, I, I'm just not sure what's next for him. Uh, hopefully this uh, this season we'll see if he uh, goes well for the as a quarterback. Uh, he might throw the ball well for like uh, Henry Ruggs or Aguilar. Uh, it's gonna be hard though. It's gonna be hard. I know like fans out there just wanted to like wanted to win. Like they just wanted like a fourth Super Bowl championship, which I kind of feel the same way. And, um, you know, I, it's just, I don't know. I mean, there's just none of like any other greatest players that I ever, I ever even seen before, because like, um, I know from the past, like Rich Gannon, um, uh, it's kind of a horror because it like, it's it, like the Super Bowl. Um, it was just, we kind of lost from that. Um, because like, uh, John Gruden was, um, was at the, uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers or, um, you know, just to win that Super Bowl back in 2003, and also the, um, some situation that the Bear Robbins wasn't even there, uh, like the, some couple weeks before the Super Bowl started, uh, because he went to Tijuana, um, he just got disappeared that day, I also heard, I, ho- I heard recently that, uh, Bear Robbins just got arrested at the Florida, um, because, like, this kind of a situation at the restaurant, you know, like, he was getting angry with this, like, woman in there, like, you know, throwing rocks at the glass in the restaurant so they they call 911 and uh, I just um when I see it it was just like he's like out of his mind you know he just uh just has some like mental disorder and to like feel that way you know mental health is a big issue now uh I just don't know what to say about you know Barry Robbins so uh you know anybody re- uh, reach out to him that that would be helpful because um he's he's gone through a lot but like uh Derek Carr uh I hope to wish him nothing but the best for this season. Like we, we'll, we'll hopefully watch him. Uh, we're just not even sure about it. Now I wanted to give you guys some like a new segment right here, and this one is called Raider Skits. Now for this very first skit, um, this man I want to give a shout out to this man named Oakland Raider Savage from Oakland. Uh, did a footage skits that is called um dome improvements so um this is interesting uh, uh this skit right here is all about uh where uh, savage and nasal uh, you know both together uh you know working like a construction working like at the uh al davis's torch and even Allegiant stadium which this is kind of a funny part because um uh it's it's kind of entertaining so um uh, enough with that being said uh enjoy watching the skit right here show due to cancer culture the New York Jets I guess they felt like her name was offensive to them and they called the NFL and had her off the show I guess they're just not over 96 today ha, you know what I mean oh, yeah. now, today we're on location at 
the Legion Stadium. And the one thing we wanted to do is take a look at this huge torch. It's an 85 foot torch, the tallest, biggest 3D printed uh, structure in the world. And uh, it has that beautiful holographic flame up there. Man, can you imagine when this thing lights up? How big a flame that would be, you know what I'm saying? That'd be crazy out there. Oh yeah, just oh 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 yeah. Well, you know you're not supposed to have an actual light flame inside of a closed, like a dome, like we're in. Now I know you can't have a real flame in the dome. I understand that's not safe. I understand that there are regulations and all that with the fire code. I understand that. You think I'm crazy or something? Like I just go around and cause havoc to places. But you know, did the liberty of uh, doing a little modifications last night, you know, uh, just kind of, I just wanted to, you know, look around and kind of see how things going. Since they have a big old Wi-Fi, uh, you know, connections over here, I felt like I should go and, uh, you know, just just kind of play with the system, you know, just just kind of make it a little better. You know, they're going to have fans out here. The fans are coming back real soon. And for the first time, I think they should have the ultimate fan experience. You know what I'm saying, Sal? Wait, what is that? What do you got there? Well, you know, I got my uh, handy dandy uh, little digital remote control or whatever you want to call it. So I'm just going to go and uh, tap into the system and uh, just do a little thing, you know. Oh, yeah. So let me just work this right here. Let me just light this torch right here, right here, right now. Oh, yeah. But you know what? I know we got a lot of power going, but we need more power, like, like mega power right there. Oh, yeah. Let's make this a little more strong, a little more brighter right there. Yeah. Almost to the point of the military right there. Yeah. No, I don't think so, Savage. No, I don't think you should go and tap into the whole network. No, don't worry. Don't worry. Think everything's fine. I, I made the right adjustments. I made the right modifications. There'll be no explosions or nothing on my end, you know. Come on. It's been a long time. You think I'm not going to learn? How to make sure that things are wired correctly? Come on, man. <laughs> all right, all right, that's okay. You got the. All right, the torch is lit. Okay, and I don't know. I should be playing with all the power over there. Now, here's what I did. I want to show you a little modification I did outside right here. See, I just do a little. Uh, let me see. Put the switch on right here. Kind of go over right here and bam. Look at that. We're on live TV outside. Look at that. Wave to the people, Sal. Wave to the people. Out there on the freeway. How are you doing out there? Oh, yeah. We're live in Las Vegas right here. In the state of yeah. I dig it. Yeah. But you know what we need? See, right now we're over here and there's no field here. We need the field so we can show everyone how beautiful this stadium looks with the field in here. What's a 20,000 pound field just about? I mean, it's like 72 horsepower. It's about an hour and a half long for it to come back in. Yeah, it used to take an hour and a half. But, you know, I did a little modification down there, you know. And let's just say an hour and a half is now going to be uh, five minutes right here. Oh, it's going too fast. Slow down, slow down. It's going too fast. All right, I got it, I got it, I got it. Uh-oh. Maker. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Davis. I know Mr. Davis. Uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, my bad there, Mr. Davis. Really, Mr. Davis. That much, Mr. Davis. All right. Um, okay, well, all right, all right, all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, good news. We are selling all our uh, season tickets for about a uh, 10,000 each. Uh, tickets. Well, only serious inquiries, you know, required, please, because, uh, yeah, uh, 
He said it's going to cost a lot of money to replace the torch and the, the, the work to the fan. And, uh, and I guess the screen on site kind of... Well, at least you can say that we'll never forget his day right here. I mean, what do you mean? So go over there. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> The Raider Art Show is sponsored by the original Raider Hip Hop tribute group from Oakland and now Las Vegas called Dean Raider Boys. Make sure you go on YouTube and type in Dean Raider Boys with a letter Z boys with their greatest Raider music hits of the Raider Nation. Check out and follow Dean Raider Boys on Facebook, Twitter, and and Instagram at Dean Raider Boys. Make sure you check out their newest hit called RN for Life. Go on YouTube and type in Dean Raider Boys, a Las Vegas Raider tribute group. Go Raiders! Wow, shout outs to Oakland Raider Savage. I mean, that video with the field trade, like you're fast forwarding, like fast, like you, you're you're making a like explosion with the Al Davis's torch and even like the medium screen outside the Allegiant Stadium. Like that, that is hilarious. You're killing me. I mean, shout outs to Sal, like for appreciation of that footage. I really appreciate if he's watching this. So um, now we're moving forward to the uh, this one Raider memes. So uh, the previous one I did was kind of a hilarious a little bit, more like offensive, but um, I got some new ones right here that we're going to be looking at. Uh, this one, this uh, picture right here for this meme, uh, it says, The Raiders' new mascot. Play dead at home and get killed on the road. Wow. Like you have this kind of a mouse, like this kind of animal on the road right there, this picture. Um, man, this is, this is weird. Like, uh, I don't know what to say about this one, but... Um, uh, for this next one right here, uh, this meme right here it says, Am I the only one here who wishes that they would allow you to join the Raider uh, faction in Fallout 4? I think that's a good idea, but they haven't put it into any of their games, so... Wow, I mean, this picture right here, like, it has John Goodman from the uh, Big Lebowski movie. Um, okay, it might be funny, but, um... Not that funny to me, but uh, this is, uh, you know, the the movie Big Lebowski is hilarious, though. So, uh, yeah, I want to give props to uh, John Goodman right there. All right, for the next one right here, uh, this one says, right before kickoff, uh, I am ready to get hurt again. <sighs> okay. Um, now, this picture right here, it has Steve Carell from The Office, uh, that footage, the screenshot. Uh, it even had like the uh, Raider, uh, Raider beanies on top of his head, uh, which uh, people were making that kind of a picture right there. So um, yeah, this uh, this is interesting. Um, uh, right here, uh, this uh, this one says when the game is about to start. Um, like a question or something, but okay. Uh, this uh, this one right here is uh, Bill Murray, uh, the actor. Uh, I'm not sure what movie it is, but uh, just uh, this is just him in his uh, bathtub uh, with the uh, toaster uh, in his hand. Uh, it also has the uh, Raider beanies in it. So um, yeah, wow, I I can't even believe it. Like uh, Bill Murray, yeah, he's a great actor. Um, uh, is in the movie like uh, Garfield uh, as Moses Jones or uh, Ghostbusters. So yeah, I mean, I want to give props to him. Um, now this is the final one right here. This me right here in this picture, uh, it says, me, wow, the game was painful to watch. Same time next week. You, son of a bitch, I'm in. Okay, now this is, um, uh, this is Rick and Morty, uh, this picture right here. Uh, it also has a Raider beanie on, uh, Morty head. <laughs> this is hilarious, like that, um... I just don't know what to say about this, but like the Rick and Morty, I mean, I do like Rick and Morty. Um, I just, I, they, you know, they make some jokes about this kind of a situation, stuff like that, because it's like more like American dad or like, um, something like maybe related to the Raiders. So I'm not really sure about it. So in that, enough, uh, enough with that being said, uh, let's move on to the, uh, segment right here, Raider events. Now, uh, this is going to be an interesting and exciting event right here. 
uh, Mob Boss, shout outs to him. Uh, he's gonna about to be opening up the events that's called Raider Nation Explosion at Madera Fairground in Madera, California. Uh, it will be held on July 17th, uh, around afternoon or something like that. But um, uh, they uh, recently been uh, sit, uh, selling out the tickets to the uh, any Raider fans that will be attending. So uh, I'm not sure. It might have been sold out. And, um, you know, there's kind of like uh, $25 or $10 that he was selling. Uh, it will be an interesting event right there. Uh, Raider fans will be attending, especially the Black Hole. I'm not really sure about that. Um, you got MC MC Magic that will be performing as a DJ. Uh, Four Dub will be attending there. Um, especially Violator, uh, Senior, and Gorilla. They're going to be attending there. Because uh, Violator, I mean, shout outs to him. He got inducted to the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fans by Howie long uh will be held on Cannon, ohio around august so we can't wait for that for seeing him getting inducted um yeah they're they're supposed to be also they're so uh supposed to be like honoring for him and senior like with the um something like special for them so i'm not really sure um yeah, and, uh, you know, that's pretty much it, you know, that's pretty much it, uh, the event is, is gonna be held at the, uh, Madera Fairgrounds, so we can't wait for that, we got two tickets that Mob Boss sends us, so, you know, I, I appreciate for him what he's doing for us, um, you know, we, we're not really sure if we, uh, if I will be attending to the event at the Raider Nation, uh, Raider Nation Explosion, so, uh, be prepared. I, I will be returning as soon as possible because, like I said, I have been to the summer kickoff uh, around Bakersfield recently, which that's kind of an amazing event that I went to. Um, yeah, I you know definitely I will be attending to the uh, Raider Nation explosion. Moving on to the another segment right here is called Raider Comments. Now, uh, we did some comments previously on the first episode. Now, for this one, uh, we're going to be checking some new comments from the previous episode. There was like five comments, so uh, let's check them out. Now, the first one uh, right here, uh, Wayne Mabry the Violator, he just comments on the previous one that I interviewed with him. Uh, he says, Great show, Raider Art. Keep inspiring through your work and best wishes. Thank you, Wayne. I mean, shouts to you. I mean, congratulate you. You're being inducted to the Pro Football Hall of Fans. I, I really appreciate your tuning in. Uh, I just got you in the interview recently, so I really appreciate it a lot. Now, for this next one, uh, Raider Elvis, he comments right here saying, Good job, Raider Art. Thank you, Raider Elvis. I mean, shout outs to uh, shout outs to you, and you know you're into the uh, acting career and stuff like that. I mean, I really appreciate what you've done for the uh, Raider Nation in the past. Uh, the final one, Raider Man Akim T Henderson, uh, who was one of a friend of ours, and he's also the original members of the Black Hole. Uh, he comments right here saying, "Great job. Sorry I couldn't get up your for your pilot. Crazy week. Thanks. Uh, thanks for always thinking of me, baby bro." Hashtag Raider Oath. Hashtag F O F. Wow. Shouts to you, Raider Man. I really appreciate you for uh, tuning in. I mean, I, I hope you're enjoying for my show, uh, especially Raider Fan Radio as well. I mean, the Raider Oath thing, you're just uh, fantastic. And you've been calling in for the uh, JG, uh, JG the Brick show on uh, Raider, Nation, uh, Raider Nation Radio in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, yeah, that's, that, that means a lot to you, you know, uh, stay around, I hope to, uh, hopefully to get you on the channel, uh, this channel pretty soon, you know, um, interview you, so I can't wait for that. So, that's all we got for the, uh, comments. Now, moving forward for the final one segment right here, uh, Raider Conversation. Now, we have our special guest right here, uh, Raider Mob Boss, as I mentioned earlier, that the Raider Nation Explosion, uh, we're, I appreciate for him coming on my ch uh, my channel, and so we can't wait to see what he he does for the uh, Raider Nation uh, from the past and what's next for him. So, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into the call of the mob boss. All right, Raider Nation, my special guest today is that this fan right here uh, has been repping the Raiders for a long time. He is also known as the vice president of the uh, KOS uh, Knight of Shield at the Merced to uh, give out the charity events and work and stuff like that. So my guest today is the one and only uh, Raider Mob Boss. Uh, Mob Boss, welcome to my show. 
Oh, right on, man. Thank you for the, the outstanding introduction. <laughs> I appreciate it, Art. I appreciate you having me on, uh, you know, to speak a little bit about um, about the model boss, in, in a sense, and, and what I do for KOS and, and, you know, just being a part of the Raider Nation and the, being part of, uh, being a big Raider fan all in general. So thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Now, like with your success with the uh, charity events and the events of the KOS and all that kind of a stuff. But before we get into those, uh, let's find out the uh, story of how you became a Raider fan. Oh, wow. Um, I'm a second generation Raider fan. My dad was a, a lifetime Raider fan. So I kind of grew up, you know, traveling around with my dad, going to Raider games in Oakland, as well as when they moved out to uh, Los Angeles. Um, my dad would take us off on Fridays, take us out of school on Fridays and drive us down to L.A. and spend the weekend down in L.A. so we could see the games in L.A. And then, of course, when they moved back to, again to Oakland, you know, it just continued on and continued on. And as I got to be an adult, um, it was just so much ingrained in my in my DNA, I guess you could say, from um, being around my dad and my uncles and, and things like that. So, so the whole atmosphere of tailgating and, and watching the Raiders. I can even remember uh, going as far back to uh, practices when uh, they used to practice out at um, Laney College and, and going out there and seeing them and, and seeing them um, at many camps in Sacramento, if you would believe that. Way out in Sacramento, they used to even be there. So it just goes back, man. It, it, the Raiders are really the only team I've ever rooted for, the only team I ever really knew anything about um like i said it all comes from 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 my father and his love and his passion for the raiders and my uncles as well and they just kind of taught me what it is to be a raider fan and um the lifestyle of being a raider fan and and i never gave it up man and i was uh one of the biggest things i, I was proud of is uh once i became an adult and um I, w I was in the military and i got shipped off for a while and um I was able to go to some Raider games on the road because I wasn't here, you know, close to go. And um, when I did get stationed back here in California, I was able to buy my own season tickets, man. And, and I remember calling my dad and telling my dad, say, hey, man, you know, you don't have to take me to Raider games no more because I got my own tickets now, you know. And it was like it was like a rite of passage to, to be able to buy my own season ticket and not have to rely on my dad to, you know, hey, I got an extra ticket to come to the game or you know, but, you know, we still hung out with each other at the games and things like that. But it was just, you know, like that rite of passage, be able to buy my own season ticket and, and have my own, you know, type of uh, uh, connection with the Raiders that way. So it, it's just been a lifelong thing, man. I, you know, like I said, since birth, since birth, that's all I've known is the Raiders. That's amazing. That That history of the L.A. days is just more fantastic history for you. Um, so with that being said, like what is your favorite players of the legends or current ones today? Oh, wow, man. As far as players, man, I, I being a fan for so long, <laughs> being a fan of, uh, of the Raiders for so, so long. I mean, there's just so many, but, um, one person that just really, really sticks out in my mind, um, was Lester Hayes, <laughs> you know, because I, I remember, I mean, you, you might be too young for this, but but the Stickum days, right? And, and he would come out on the, on, on, on the field with all of this Stickum all over his jersey and on his pants and, and all over his hands and, and on his top of his helmet. And, and I remember one time um, when Lester Hayes uh, got an interception and it actually hit the top of his helmet, stuck to the top of his helmet, and he pulled the ball off his helmet and ran it back. So Lester Hayes is like one of my all-time, all-time favorite, favorite defensive uh, Raider players. And, and I still get to see him. He lives here in the area where, where we are, you know, we're, we're in 209 and he actually doesn't live too far from us. Oh, cool. So I get to, I get to see him quite a bit. You know, I run into him from place to place and he does a lot of signings in our area and things like that. So I get to see him. 
And, you know, and I always bring that story up to him every time I run into him. I, said, man, I remember, you know, that you're one of the players that made me want to be a defensive player when I played high school football because, you know, even though we weren't allowed to use stick them by the time I got to high school and things like that. But just those kind of things and, and, and legendary players, man. Um, Willie Brown, you know, I, I was real, real small, um, but, you know, Watching, you know, even going back and watching old films of Willie Brown and just, man, and, and Plunkett, you know, that was one of my dad's, like, all-time favorite quarterbacks was Plunkett. And, and so just, man, the history uh, goes on, man. And I, there's so many, and you know, um, Seabass, you know what I mean? I loved him, you know, um, even today. Um, you know, I know everybody likes to say Derek Carr and all that, and, and I love Derek Carr. I've watched him since Fresno State and all those different things, but but there were some players that, you know, like a Marshawn Lynch, and, you know, there's just, man, the list could go on. If, if I, you know, and of course, you know, Charles Woodson, you know, one of the great players that, I, that I've always watched, and, you know, just just so many, and, and, and real talk, um, one of my favorite Raiders who is no longer a Raider, is um, Jared Cook. And I was really, really fascinated with, with the work that Jared Cook did for us in the couple of years he was with us. And when he got traded, my heart broke. My heart broke, you know. And um, the year uh, the year before he got traded, I got to know him on a personal level. And so it was really, you know, intense. So it really hurt, broke my heart to see Jared Cook go somewhere else because – he was great for us, and, and I just still, I still to this day don't understand why we let him go. But, you know, so there's players that are out there, um, you know, that I, I still watch because when they were Raiders, you know, I, I had a fascination with them. I had a connection with them. I liked the way they played and what they did for us as a team. So even though he's not a Raider, I still kind of keep up with him and watch what he does and, you know, on other teams when he was with the Saints and some other people. So, Man, uh, I could go on and on about list of players that because there's I can't say that there's just one player that I that I just love, you know, because there's so many and we've had so many great players come through our organization over the years since you know I'm I'm almost 50 years old, so I've been around a long time to to see a lot of great ones come come and go, you know, Stabler and. Just, just so many, man. The list just goes on. Jeff George, if you remember that far back, um, Jeff George was one of my favorite quarterbacks too. So, just so many, man. The list just goes on and on. Yeah, I mean, uh, Lester Hayes that you mentioned that that that's great that he lives close to you. I mean, uh, I was going through uh, Marshall Lynch, and uh, I don't I don't bash or claim about Derek Carr's situation. That the um, you know I heard some of the fans are just like bashing him like in the in the kind of way that he's not a great quarterback. Um, like to me, I mean, I mean, I, I he's fine being a quarterback, but like he's not like the best like Ken Stabler or. Um, uh, Rich Gannon, but like I mean, he he kind of make mistakes sometimes. I mean, it's hard for him, but like I know he uh, broke his leg around 2016 and broke right, his right peony before the playoffs. Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, I know. Like that, the that was his shot. That was his shot, man. And and he hasn't really recovered since then, or, or we haven't been successful since then, um, as far as making the playoffs. And that's what gives people that fuel the fire to um to go after him or or say he's not the quarterback for us or or whatever the case may be now stat wise um car puts up good numbers i mean it is what it is stats are there the, the proof is there he puts up good numbers he just hasn't got us over the hump and so when you don't get people because we we so desperately the fans so desperately want to be in the playoffs. They want to be in the postseason. They want to be in the Super Bowl. They want to win a Super Bowl so desperately that um, when we don't have a guy that's getting us there, they tend to blame, you know, because because that's that's kind of the the coat that the the quarterback always is going to wear, no matter what's going on. The blame is always going to ultimately be on the quarterback, and man, when they say we haven't made it, and it's because of him. Well, stats don't say it's because of him. You know what I mean? He just hasn't got us there. So, um, and the one opportunity that we thought we were going to get there, he broke his leg right before, you know. So, circumstances have made it bad for, for Derek Carter. Um, 
as far as you know in some people's mind i mean you have you have 50 percent of the fans that say he's a great quarterback and 50 percent of the fans say we need to get rid of him and that kind of thing but my stance on on Derek Hart is he has the capability i know he has the capability um we keep putting um successful people around him to try to make him better and make us as a team better and when we get over the hump then people will say, oh, well, there, you know, that's Derek Carr that was, you know, where was he, you know what I mean? Then they'll, they'll lay off of him. But until until we, we we perform or we get to a level where we're in the playoffs, people are always going to find fault in Derek Carr. And and it's, it's tough, man. It's tough for him because, like I said, I know he has the skills to do it because um, I even get frustrated with him because I want to win, him, you know. But – until Everybody we does. make a change, until our organization makes a change and, and Derek Carr is no longer our quarterback, he's the quarterback. And, and I have to support that. I have to support whoever's on the field wearing our jersey playing down for down to down. And, and right now that's Derek Carr who's at the, at the helm. And so that's who I'm going to support. Win, lose, or tie, as we say. You know what I mean? So, so you got to stay behind the man and, and instead of bashing him, um, let's try to give him a little bit of encouragement to, to put some fuel in, under his fire to, to get him, to get us over the hump, you know, because bashing him doesn't help us. It doesn't help us. It just, you know, rips away at his confidence because I'm sure he sees it on the social medias and the blogs and things like that. Uh, I mean, I'm sure he reads it just as much as we read it. So that kind of takes away, you know, it chips away at your confidence when, when your own fans are beating you up, you know. So me, from, uh, uh, from my standpoint, as long as he's the quarterback and as long as he's the starter, I'm going to support him. You know, even when he, when he's not doing well, I'm, I'm going to still encourage him because he's my quarterback and I want my quarterback to be successful because if he's successful, the team's successful. So you're never going to really hear me. You know, you might hear me get frustrated. Don't get me wrong. You might hear me get frustrated about him, but you won't hear me bashing him because as long as he's wearing that, that silver and black and leading our team, man, I'm going to be behind him. That's awesome. That's amazing. I'll, I'll look for someone, too, like rugs and stuff. But um, Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. now uh, for the, this question right here, uh, what is your favorite memories going to Ricky Sports Theater and Grill and being friends with Ricky Ricardo, the late Ricky Ricardo? Oh, wow. Oh, man. All I can tell you is there's many, many, many a weekend um, of going down there, getting ready for the game, um, and getting there sometimes on a Friday and going hanging out on Friday, but definitely on Saturday nights, um, going to hang out over there at Ricky's and and just him being so personable and, and being so nice to all. And, and at that time, he, he remembered us all, you know, by, by name, by face, you know, because you have been there so many times, you know what I mean? So he kind of remembers everybody and, and you almost, and you were like part of his, his family coming into the, coming into the joint and, and just walking into that place and seeing all the, the history on the walls, all the, the memorabilia and the pictures and just so much, man. And, and he'll be sorely missed. Um, it, it's a, it, it was a shock for all of us, obviously, um, when he passed away and then to turn around and, and Ricky's decided to close and it was no longer available to us. Um, but in a, in a, in a real kind of way, <laughs> I know this might sound, some people are going to take this wrong, but it almost w w was kind of fitting because of the fact that the Raiders had moved out of the city and just after the Raiders moved out of the city, they closed down Ricky's. So it was almost like if the Raiders aren't going to be here, Ricky Sports Bar shouldn't be here. You, you, you get what I mean? Because Ricky's was so much a part of, of the culture of the Raiders. And you could go into Ricky's on a weekend and, and you might bump into a player. You might sit right next to a player and, you know, everybody, you could see some of everybody in there on the weekends or on game day weekends. You could see some of anybody and, and that place was legendary. And so it'll never be the same. I know there's some places down in Vegas um, that are kind of becoming the new hangout spots and stuff for, for the fans and, and things like that. But, There'll never be another Ricky's man. There'll, there'll never be another another bar that way. And, and um, 
and, and just him and his wife, man, just, I mean, what can you say, man? They were just great people, great atmosphere. And, and like I said, man, if, if you never got the chance to walk into that place and just look around on the walls and the ceilings and, and, and everywhere in there and just see nothing but Raider history. I mean, from year after year after year. And, you know, and as I, I as I grew up, because I, I remember in the old days, you could go in there, you know, before I was even 21, you know, you could go in there and my dad would be sitting at the bar with a, with a beer or something like that. And, and I'd slide up next to him with a, with a, you know, get a Coke or whatever it was. So, so watching the walls change year after year and, and seeing more and more memorabilia and, and things go up there and man, that, that, that place, man, it's going to be a missed place. And he's definitely going to be a missed individual around the Raiders. Definitely, yeah, me too. Um, yeah, it's a great place. It was a special place for the Raider Nation. I mean, I like you said. I mean, I I had a, like a soda over there. Uh, they offered me, but like in Las Vegas, uh, Raider Rob, he's actually going to be opening up this year for the summer. is called the Raider Rob Vegas Street Grill. And I know there's some of the fans that are going into the Stage Door Casino while watching the game over at the Allegiant Stadium that they can't even afford to go in there. So the Raider Nation goes into like any sports bar to be like reunited and you know just watch the game together. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Tommy Rockers is is one of the one of the big spots over there. The stage door over there with Cisco and, and his crew uh, with the Black Hole. Um, when Rob opens up his place, I know there's a there's a Virgil's uh, barbecue place out there um, that's been very welcoming over the last couple of years. But you know, so like I said, people are trying their best to. Um, I wouldn't say recreate Ricky's, but, but give an atmosphere, something like Ricky's for, for us to kind of come and come together because of the fact, yeah, a lot of people won't be able to afford to get into the stadium with these prices. And so there's still going to be places in Vegas for us to gather and get together and, and watch the games together and cheer together. So, so thankful for those new places that are popping up. Like I said, Tommy Rocker's stage door, um, Virgil's, um, barbecue, um, you know, when Rob gets his place open, you know, there's, there's going to be some great places to go. And, and I know, uh, a lot of the, the casinos out there are going to be very welcoming to Raider fans to come into the casinos to watch the games. Um, last year, um, uh, while we were not allowed in the stadium due to COVID, um, I got to go down to Vegas and, um, do some appearances with the Jersey, um, Jersey Tucker, Raider Jers, Dirty Jers, as you guys know her, um, and do some appearances in some of the casinos for, for Raider games. And, and it was cool, and, uh, and I had a good time, and, and, you know, the Raider fans gathered together. And so you kind of still get the little bit of the feel. It's never going to be the same as what we had in Oakland at all. It's, it's totally different, but, but at least you get a little bit of the vibe. A little bit of the vibe is still there, and, and the love for the Raiders is still there amongst the, the fans. So, you know, we'll, we'll make it. We'll make it our home here shortly, and, and those new folks to what it is to be a part of uh, the Raider Nation and being a Raider fan. They'll they'll start to to jump on board and get it, and and the vibe will change, and and then we'll we'll have something similar. I will never say it'll be the same because it won't be, but we'll have something similar like what we had in Oakland here. You know, in a few years. So it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Well, that's why I wanted to be part of as well one day, like hopefully, but um, we'll have to see. Yeah, we just have to see how it grows. But um, one thing is Raider fans and, and and the spirit of the Raider Nation don't die. You know what I mean? Um, so no matter where the team goes, they're always going to have, have that atmosphere that's going to travel with them, that's going to follow them in. And so that's that's the one thing I know that the spirit won't die. Like I said, it will never be the same as, as what we had in Oakland. But but that that inner fire, that inner burn about the Raiders, it, it just it just goes with each one of us. And so wherever we go, wherever that team goes, that spirit's going to go with us. So it, it'll it'll happen eventually in Vegas, and you'll see you'll see um, you know like I said something similar to what we had in Oakland here shortly. Okay. Now, um, what is your collaboration with uh, Raider Puppet and Raider Homer? Oh, good, good, good question. Um, I've known Homer for, uh, I don't know, I guess 
maybe about five years or so. I guess, I guess it's been been a little bit over five years. We started out um, obviously over social media, and then um, I got to meet him for the very first time face to face. Funny story. I got to meet him first time face to face. I was actually because I, I I do this every year, um, right before the season starts. The, usually the week before the season starts, I usually go um, to Al Davis's um, gravesite, and I was there for for my annual visit, and I heard somebody behind me say, "Hey, there's there's my boss right there, right?" And I turn around and and it's it's you know I know him as Doug. I mean. Homer, but Douglas. Yeah, Douglas. And, uh, and, and I turned around and I said, hey, Doug, well, we finally get to meet, you know, face to face. And he was with Callie Mark. He was with Callie Mark. He said, yeah, man, I had to come out here, you know, and come 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 to see Oakland. And I, I know you've been telling me about coming to see Oakland for years and, and experiencing and I had to come here. And, and he says, you know, one of the first things I wanted to do was come to, you know, Al's, um, Al's place, place of rest. And, you know, how fitting is it that when I walked in here that you're here? And so we got to talking and things like that. And so we, we just we just been friends over the years. And then uh, when we had the first uh, Raider Nation explosion, uh, Homer came out for the Raider Nation explosion as well. And he had a great time. And, he, you know, so, so now um, he's become a part of the Raider Nation explosion family in a sense. Um, so this year... What you'll get out of Homer is um, he's going to be uh, he's going to be t- uh, broadcasting um, from the event, and awesome. he's going to be doing some amazing things. And part of his broadcast team is is, is Salvador, which we all know as Macho or uh, Raider Savage, and then um, Raider Puppet oh, as yeah. well. And so um, when he brought Raider Puppet on his team, you know, obviously he says, "Hey, well, you got to get in touch with Mob and you can talk to Mob and." So, um, so we started kind of communicating, you know, via text message and, and things like that and, and over social media. And then, uh, a few months, uh, it's been a little while now, but I was out in Vegas and while I was out there, um, puppet reached out to me and says, Hey man, you're in Vegas. Let's meet up. Uh, so we can meet each other face to face. And, and I said, okay, yeah. So we met up and we had breakfast together out there in Vegas and, you know, we just hit it off, man. He's a he's a real cool dude. Um, he's a big Raider fan. He's really got the he got his head on his shoulder. And before we got done, and I wasn't even prepared for it at the time. You know, I just thought we were gonna you know hang out, have some breakfast, have have a little conversation, get to know each other. He says, "Hey, man. Well, then we need to. Since I got you here, let's um <laughs> let's do some videos." And I was like, "I don't. Okay. Well, I you know, I'm fortunate enough." Um, like I said, I was down there in Vegas, so I had, I had, you know, the costume with me. And I said, well, give me, you know, five five minutes, ten minutes or so to get switched out, and, and we could do it. And he brought out the puppet, and, and we did some amazing videos, some some, some videos for, for the event, um, for, the, for the explosion, and for the magazine, for the Raider Nation magazine. And, and he was just so professional and so on it with, with the way he did things. I was just, like, impressed. And I was like, well, it was already, we already had a, a great connection friend wise and, and communication wise. And then when I got to see him work professionally in this setting, and, and like I said, that wasn't anything that we had planned. We didn't know we were going to do it, but it was like, okay, hey, let's do, since we're together, let's just go ahead and get this done. Right. And he was so professional and, and he, he had his ideas about how he wanted the videos to go and. And I think we, we spent, you know, not too long. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm kind of accustomed to doing some of those stuff a little bit. And, and obviously he's accustomed to it. So it wasn't like we were there taking a whole bunch of takes and do it over. We had to retake it because this didn't come out. We were like knocking these things out like bang, 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 bang. And I was just so amazed of how much work we got out in, in such a short amount of time because he's so professional. And, and so he's just a great asset to the team. Um, he's a great person, you know, like I said, outside of, you know, all the Raider stuff, he, he's just a great guy to talk to. Um, he's very personable, you know, so he, he's just a good guy. And I'm glad um, that Homer was able to bring him in and, and, you know, make that connection with me and him and, 
and, and build that friendship with that guy because uh, he, he's just a good guy to be around, man. So, so look out for Raider Tuppy because he, he's, he's got a lot of stuff, man, and he's going to be big around this place, and he's going to bring a lot of attention to to the Raider Nation as well as the, as the Raiders in general, you know, the team as well. Um, I don't know if you got a chance to see. He's, he's already been on Telemundo and – all of these other uh, different networks down there in, in Las Vegas. So he's he's making a he's making a big name for himself and bringing a lot of attention to the Raiders and the Raider fans. So so just he's just a good guy, man. So keep in touch with Puppet, man. He's a good dude to know. Yeah, I mean, like for me, I I um I found Puppet through uh, Homer, and I found Homer through uh, Raider Rob. You know, I did not know these guys at first, like last year. But, you know, I was introduced myself to them, and they were pretty cool guys. I mean, like, uh, Homer, he's from Austin, Texas. Uh, pretty cool guy. You know, he runs for the uh, the Black Hole chapter over there. Uh, mm-hmm. Puppet, yeah, David, you know, he's a pretty cool guy. You know, I have a FaceTime with him a little while. Uh, he does a lot of the Puppet stuff work. You know, I, I'm so glad he collaborate, uh, collaborate with me on my show. And that's just amazing thing, just to uh, collaborate on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's always... You know, he, he works with people with open arms, man, and and, and that's that's the thing um, for everybody. Um, connect with those who, who who have the common interests or, or doing what you're doing and and doing all these different collaborations, like you know, like him working with you, Homer working with you, and you know, it, it just makes the that camaraderie within the, the the Raider fan base just just that much more when we're all able to to get along with one another and be able to work with each other on different projects and, and kind of keep that information about the Raiders out there into the world. Cause there's a lot, a lot of folks to reach out to, you know, there, there's there, the Raider nation and the Raider fan base is, is worldwide. And the more people that we can um, reach out to and, and let them know about you know, what it is to be a Raider fan, what it is to be a part of this culture that we call the Raider Nation, man, is, is just amazing. And because um, I know there's a lot of fans that I know from other teams who, you know, they're, they're YouTubers or they're podcasters or whatever, and, and they see some of the shows that are out there and they say, well, dang, you know, my team doesn't do that. You know what I mean? All the stuff that you guys do together and the podcasts I see out there and the YouTubes I see out there, you know, there's not a lot of that of other teams like you see with us. So we're, we're our fan base is making a lot of noise, you know, out there in the world. And, and so it's good to see you guys all working together and, and making these things happen, Rob, with the Raider Fan Radio and all the different different outlets that are out there, whether it be radio, media, you know, internet, whatever it is, man, we're, we're making a lot of noise out there. So it's good to see everybody working together like that. Yeah. Um, and speaking of that, like with the, the Oakland is no, uh, no longer, but, um, what was your reaction when the Raiders announced the Vegas moving around 2017? Um, well, I mean, to be honest, I, I probably like most Raider fans that are from, from this area and, and from the Bay Area. Um, we were all just heartbroken and disappointed, of course, um, that we couldn't survive in Oakland because the, um, for most of us, there's that connection to the Coliseum. You know, um, you've been going there so many years of your life and, and there's so many memories that are attached to those parking lots and those Coliseums and and, and different things like that, and so many game days uh, being there. So, so it was very heartbreaking um, at first. I mean, and it was a hard pill to swallow, to be honest. But um, being a Raider fan is so Im- embedded in my DNA that even though I was heartbroken, wherever the team was going to go, I was going to follow. And I was not going to stop being a Raider fan because they weren't in the city anymore, even though it bothered me. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it really did. And even even now, you know, I still get choked up sometimes uh, going through pictures and things like that and and because and it brings back all of those memories of, of, of times that I spent, like I said, now, you know, being a kid, 
um, Me too. all the way up to all the way up to adulthood. Yeah, you know what, what it's about because you've been around there with your mom for so many years, so you understand what I mean. Um, so yeah. all of those memories that are attached to being in Oakland, it was it was it was a hard pill to swallow. But um, but with it being in our DNA that way, regardless of where they went we were still going to be Raider fans and we were still going to follow them. And we was, and you know, and a lot of people, I know they said, how can you, how can you still be a Raider fan? And they betrayed you and they left, they left Oakland twice. And I said, yeah, I, I lived through all of that. And, and even when they went, went to LA, like I said, my dad packed us up in a car and, and we drove to LA because we, you couldn't stop being a Raider fan. It's in your blood. So you can't stop, you know? So it, it was heartbreaking. And, 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 you know, and, and like I said, I've, I've made many, many visits over the last year, year and a half to Vegas since the move. And I, I know I'm starting to, you know, it's starting to grow on me. You know, do I, is it not making me miss Oakland? No, <laughs> but it's starting to grow on me. You know what I mean? The, the atmosphere in Vegas is, is nice. The stadium is beautiful. We, we got a state of the art stadium that the Raiders deserve and the fans deserve. So, so I got to be grateful that um, if we were going to move, that we moved there and we got what we got. So if, now would I would love to be back in that. I mean, I, I would trade that that beautiful stadium for that concrete jungle any any freaking day, to be honest. But but that's like gorilla, gorilla. Yeah, yeah, that's not what happened. So so we got to just we just got to deal with it, man, and and suck it up and go make the best of it out there in Vegas. Like I said. Um, you know, it's a beautiful place out there. That stadium is beautiful, so we can't really be too upset about it because of the fact of what we got out of the deal. So, so I'm just rolling with the punches, and like I said, no matter where the Raiders go, I'm always going to follow. If the Raiders go to the moon, I'll just have to become an astronaut. <laughs> yeah, um, like I almost quit. Like when they announced it, like I was, I was go- almost going to decide to move on. But like the truth is, I- I'm still a Raider fan in my life since I was a kid. You know, I just never stopped. Of following the Raiders, like I look up the news about the Raiders, so that's just my passion for me. And I just created a YouTube channel recently just to keep my fandom alive and uh, pass it on to the tradition of the younger generation. Yeah, and and that's what we have to do, man. Um, we have to keep the traditions and 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 things that were were built um, in Oakland um, um, the way we kind of remember things we just have to keep that alive and and bring that spirit with us to vegas and let those new folks that are catching on and coming new to it um get involved and kind of see how we did it and and then we'll get some of that what we we had in in oakland we'll get some of that in vegas too so so uh, uh, you die hard oakland fans or or lifetime uh raider fans who, who understand what i'm talking about bring that don't bring the negative spirit of wow we left Oakland. Don't don't bring that spirit. Bring the the, the, the energy of Oakland. Bring that to Vegas and, and and shed that around so people will know, you know what it what it meant and what Oakland meant. And so I'm I'm really on board with the folks that say forever Oakland. It doesn't mean that um, we're not giving respect to Vegas. It just means that in our hearts and in our spirits, what we've learned over the years of being in Oakland is what we're bringing to Vegas. And that's what I'm bringing to Vegas. That spirit of, of what I've learned in Oakland and, and how it was to be in Oakland. I'm trying to bring that same energy and that same spirit on to Vegas with me. Yeah. I I'm, I'm really grateful too. Um, so, uh, how was it like being like, what was your experience about being the vice president of the night of the shield in Merced? Okay. Um, Outside of uh, the persona of, of the mob boss, obviously there there's a, a genuine soul <laughs> underneath that, you know. And um, being the vice president of of the KOS Knights of the Shield, um, Merced Chapter Two Hundred Nine, I'm able to to express that side of myself, um, that compassionate side of myself, where. You know, I could give back to my community because that's a that's a big desire of mine to make things better, you know, and to be able to blend my passion for football and my passion for the Raiders with a club 
that's out there in the community doing positive work, you know, whether we're out there feeding the less fortunate, doing backpack drives, doing, you know, uh, clothing drives and, you know, just whatever it is that we, we, we do a lot of work uh, in the community. And so to be able to be a part of that club and get to do those things and, and also represent the Raiders and give um, the community a different perspective of what it is to be a Raider fan. Cause a lot of times people only see what they think they see, whether it's on TV or, you know, whatever. And they see these, you know, what they think are tough guys, you know, running around with these black jerseys and these black hats and they look all mean and, you know, they wear this paint on their face and skulls and all this kind of stuff. And sometimes um, Raider fans get a bad in, impression of what we really are and who we are and so through the knights of the shield shout out to my president um pedro cortez uh, i'm sorry pedro hernandez right. um you know shout out to him for 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 asking me to be his vice president and and coming on board um i really appreciate um the opportunity i've been able to be a part of them for i think we're going on six or seven years now um, as their vice president and and like I said so to be able to show the community a different side of Raider fans that we're compassionate that we care about the communities that we live in we want to make a difference um, the Knights of the Show has been able to give me that avenue to do that and, and I just I love it man I love it you know I, I mean I I get an enjoyment of going to the games and dressing up and 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 you know having fun with the fans and all that kind of stuff but but outside of that, man, to be able to go into the community and it and it's not about the costume, you know what I mean? It's just about humanity and, you know, giving back. And that's a good way for me to be able to express that side of myself and be able to give back to my community that's 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 here, you know, because every community needs something, man, and they need some people and they need leaders out there that, that are willing to give of themselves and, and, and go and do what's right for the community. So um, KOS, Knights of the Shield, tries to give a good representation um, of, of what it is to be a Raider fan, and we're not just a bunch of, you know, troublemakers that get drunk and party all the time. We actually care, and we actually have good hearts, and, and we're out there trying to do things positive. So so I love, love, love being a, a member of Knights of the Shield, and especially being a vice president uh, in that chapter, it's just an amazing honor to be a part of it and, and to have the title that I carry. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Speaking of the costume, uh, I know we have been like complaining about this kind of a copy, uh, copycat situation with the Raider nation with their costumes, the same costumes. So what is your take on that? Well, let me just say this. Um, there's room for every, every fan that wants to express themselves however they want to express themselves, whether it be in a costume, whether it just be in a Raider jersey or a Raider hat or a Raider t-shirt, however they want to express themselves. There's room for everybody, right? But creativity is something that kind of expresses it just that much more. It, 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 you know, so being creative, um, and building a persona that is not mimicking something that's already been done, that's that's the kind of stuff that I, I, I respect, okay? Um, so I'm, I, it's just one of those things, man, because there's, there's people out there who have built their persona for years and years and years, and then to turn around and see somebody mimic their persona or kind of step on their toes, it's kind of hurtful. You know, um, I'm sure, you know, Wayne may not never say it. Um, Mark may not never say it. Rilla may not never say it. Violator may not never say it. But when they see somebody come into a, a, a venue and they're dressed in a gorilla costume with big balls around their neck. That's, that's kind of, it's kind of hurtful. 
because they built those personas. They they made that, or somebody comes in with the spikes and the the, the face paint like like Violator. If somebody was to do that, that would be hurtful, you know. Oh um, yeah. I, I, the old saying is imitation is the biggest form of flattery, and in some ways I, I get that, but then in some ways I just feel like man, there's so many different ideas out there and if you're creative enough you can build your own persona that you don't have to mimic or or copy or follow behind somebody else you know because even in the creation of, of, of the mob boss um i spoke to a lot of people who were already um character fans i spoke to wayne personally um i spoke to mark personally about what i wanted to do and um, the first piece of advice that most of those people, and these are people who had been doing it, you know, for 15, 20 years, 30 years, you know, prior to me even showing up. And the first thing they said was, find, be creative and find something that fits you. You don't have to be like everybody else. And, and I knew for a fact I didn't want to wear a gorilla suit, you know, I, you know, this too damn hot for that you know and then yeah. i didn't want to you know i'm not a guy that's into the spikes and the skulls and all that kind of stuff and so you know i'm the face paint so i didn't want to look like violator and so it was a creative process that went into it i mean there's a backstory to why i became the mob boss but even with the backstory there was still some creative process that went into it some thought process and one of those major thought processes was I don't want to look like everybody else that's out there. I don't want to copy or, or mimic what's already been done. I want to have something that's unique to to me so so that I could be, in a sense, um, recognized and not blend into the crowd because everybody's got, you know, pain on their face, you know, or whatever the case may be. Mob boss is something that's very unique. You, you know, you, you, you I'm, I've seen people in masks and all that kind of stuff, but you really, you know, my boss, when you see him, just like, you know, violator, when you see him, you know, gorilla, really, when you see him, some of these other, um, folks, it's hard to tell the difference between them because they're kind of mimicking what's already out there. So, so I would just say there's room for everybody to be creative. There's room for everybody to be a character. If that's the way you want to express yourself or your fan, um, your inner personas or whatever, if that's the way, there's room for everybody. But I just suggest that you be more, be creative and, and try to do something that people haven't seen before, do something that's different and, you know, try to make your own lane for yourself instead of, you know, cause people, like I said, people get really, really hurt after they've been doing something for so many years and then somebody shows up and they look just like them. <laughs> and you're like, wait, the original. Hold on, man, what's going on here? You know what I mean? And so I would, I would suggest that people do their research. You know, I, I know a lot of people didn't have the experience in Oakland to know what was already out there or things like that, but there's enough stuff online. You could do your research and find out who's who, um, who dresses like what and all that kind of stuff. And, and that way you don't have that problem. You try to try to be original, try to be unique, try to do your own thing and have your own lane. And, and that's just my opinion, you know, because the last time I spoke on this, people got all upset. My boss said blah, 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 right? And people got all upset about it, but that's just my opinion. And, and, and opinions are like assholes. Everybody got one. You don't have to like my opinion. Yeah. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to, you know, live and die off of what my boss says. You know what I mean? And people took it so seriously. You know, oh my gosh, mobs, you know, you know, the word hater always comes out. You know, mobs hating on people because he really? doesn't want people to dress like this or he doesn't. But when you start hurting people's feelings, because we're family. And, and I'm really passionate about the, the nation being a family. And when you're family, you you try your best not to hurt people. And when people get hurt because you've mimicked or copied something that they built, that's, that's to me, that's not right. 
and, and I'm always going to stand. Uh, uh, it might not always be the popular stance, but I'm always going to stand on what's right. And I'm always going to stand up for those who are being hurt. Me too. No, no matter who you are, no matter who you are, I'm going to stand up for, for those that are being hurt. And, you know, sometimes, you know, because I, I'm a person too, you know what I mean? And, and maybe sometimes I say things a little harsh and, and I'm working on that. My wife even tells me, you know, you know, you don't have to be so tough all the time because even with my kids, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a tough. Well, like, you know, for- that's, just, that's just me, you know? And so if I said it a little harsh, and, and it rubbed people the wrong way. That's not that was not my intent. My intent is to let people know to be creative. There's nothing saying that you can't dress up. There's nothing saying that you can't have a persona. But be creative. Have your own. Have your own lane. Make your make something unique to you that that makes you stand apart from from whatever else is already out there. And and there's room for everybody. There's room for everybody. You know. And, and as we see over the last couple of years, you know, character fans are popping up more than you've ever seen in your whole, and I've been around the Raiders a long time. And I can remember, Me too. you know, back in, back in the day, even in the LA days, when, and when it was very rare to see, you know, if you got a chance to run into Violator or, or, or Mystic or, or Raider Jerry or somebody like, it was kind of rare. Oh yeah, I know. But now, you, you know, when it, but now you go into places now and there's, 200 people dressed up you know so it, it's, it's the culture is changing the but, culture is changing over the years so so that shows you that there's room for everybody there is room for everybody to dress up if that's what they feel like and that's what they think you know that expresses um the way they want to express themselves as a raider fan there's nobody saying that you can't do that but all i'm saying is try to be unique try to be your own, try to have your own persona be unique to you so that um, you're not stepping on somebody's toes or hurting somebody's feelings or taking something away from something, someone that's built that for years and years. Because like I said, um, I think a lot of people would get offended if you walked into a place and you've seen somebody dressed as Gorilla Rilla or you've seen somebody dressed as a violator or something like that and you knew that wasn't him. You knew that wasn't Mark. You knew that wasn't Wayne. If somebody no. just... You know, people would get offended by that. <laughs> I know. So, you know. So you know, just be unique. You know, like for me, like I'm, I'm all about you. I mean, I'm, I'm all about being original. You know, that's part of my, that's part of my goal for me. You know, being a fan. You know, getting involved with these costumes and stuff. So, um, and speaking of I'm that, you original, because man, I'm gonna tell you, I, I, you may not remember, but I remember, um, watching you when you were smaller. And, and seeing you come in and, and the football outfit and you had the helmet tilted back on the back of your head a little bit with this. And I remember that from, from even when you were smaller and then to watch you, you know, now, now you're doing your own, you're adult and you're doing, you know, talk shows and all of this kind of stuff. But it's, it's, it's unique. You know, Raider art when he walks, when he comes by, you, you know what I mean? So that's what I'm talking about. That uniqueness, you know, where, where you know who that person is. You, you don't have to think twice. Well, is that so-and-so, you know, or double take because they look so similar to somebody else. You know what I mean? So that uniqueness, man, that's, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. That's what I'm about. Now let's, uh, let's talk about your uh, event, the Raider Nation explosion. Like what, what is your plans going to be for you guys? Oh my gosh. Um, this is the second time we've been able to do the Raider Nation explosion. Um, we were going to do it last year, but, you know, obviously the world was shut down with the COVID, so we didn't get to do it last year. So we're bringing it back again. And um, there's just so much, so much. And, 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 the, and the best way I can explain it is it's it's a Raider fair. <laughs> a Raider <laughs> fair, like if you went to, to, to the – you know, the county fair or the state fair or whatever. It's kind of like that, you know, where you're going to have all the food vendors, you're going to have uh, clothing vendors, Raider vendors, you're going to have all this kind of stuff. Um, this year we're incorporating a, a, a truck show. Um, so where we're going to have probably anywhere from, uh, I think it's somewhere around 200 or something trucks, even maybe even a little more trucks to come and view like the car shows and things like that. So, We'll have the truck show involved. Um, we have one of the biggest concerts um, that I've seen in, in, in years and years and years and years. Um, you know, headlining our concert is obviously MC Magic and um, Delphonics. 
and um, several other artists that are going to perform. Um, we got a lot of the the, the Raider rap artists that are going to come dub. out. Do DRE, 4Dub, um, um, Big Mac, uh, Certified Trouble, Lonnie Cash. Um, there's a special one <laughs> that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna release on your show because I haven't put it out there yet. But there there is another oh, special worry. one that's that's coming out um, coming out. That we just um, worked out a deal with this individual um, a few I think about two weeks ago. We worked out something with this individual and he calls us up and he was like, "Hey man, I gotta be a part of this show. How can I how can I get in on the show?" And um, so he's gonna so there's gonna you're gonna see some of your favorite. Um, Raider rap groups that are going to be out there. We're going to put on one hell of a concert. Um, we also have, we've teamed up with the, the League of Bandits to bring um, some of the players out um, to see. You guys are going to see Brian Edwards. You're also going to see Damon Arnett. And um, I believe they're working, uh, League of Bandits is working on a third player to also be there that day. So we're giving, giving you guys the biggest Raider event that we could possibly give to the fans. And you're going to see everybody you want to see. Um, we've been apart in a lot of ways for a long time because of COVID. It separated us all for, for a long time. So this is one place um, that that we're going to be able to all get together and, and just see, man, just have some fun, man. Just have some fun and get all pumped up because right after that, preseason starts, uh, training camp starts, and then preseason and then we go into the season. So this is the last big, you know, kind of pep rally, as I want to call it, uh, pep rally, family reunion type of thing for all of us before the season gets started. So um, I hope everybody gets a chance to come out and experience what it is to be a part of the Raider Nation explosion because it's, it's a phenomenal event. Um, Eminem Productions, shout out to um, Raider Tone, Pete Hernandez, Mike Mejia, and myself, who, who, who are collaborating together um, as Eminem Productions to put that on. And we're, we're just working really hard to give you guys a great, great show and a great day out there with the Raider family. And, and I hope you all get a chance to come out and experience it because it's, it's an event like no other. I'm going to tell you that. And I've been going to events many, many years. Um, I was just down there with Lorenzo. Shout out to Lorenzo at the Bakersfield Summer Kickoff, which is always a oh, great yeah. event to attend every year. I always have a great time there. And Lorenzo's going to come up and actually um, support our event down there at the Explosion. So I appreciate that from him. You know, the, that Raider family supports each other. I went down there and supported his event. He's coming up and to support our event. And that's how we work together and keep a family together. We just keep supporting one another. And like I said, collaborations, um, the, the, the truck community, we're collaborating with them, and we're also collaborating with the League of Bandits to bring the players in. So that's how we make everything work, man. It's just collaborations within the family to, to bring the Raider fans the best things that we can bring them. And, and this is just going to be one hell of an event. Like I said, the biggest pep rally, um, family reunion, all tied up in one, man. So I hope everybody gets a chance to come out and experience it. All right. Well, um, before we wrap this up, like one question, any advice to the younger Raider fans in the generation today that are yet still to come? My advice to, to, to not just the younger Raider fans, but, but any Raider fan that's out there, whether you've been around for years or, or you're just new to, to the Raider community, um, this is a true community. It's a true culture and, and keep the passion keep the passion and keep the faith. Um, it's been a hard road for the Raiders as far as success goes, but success is on the horizon. So don't give up, stay true, stay compa uh, stay passionate for the team, keep motivating and, and keep being out there, man. Just keep supporting this team and, and so that the team can, can see the support of the fans behind them. And, and they're going to get us where we want to be, man. So you guys just stay in there, hang in there, and, and keep rooting loud, keep yelling loud, keep wearing them colors every day, and, and just try to get yourself involved in the, to the community as, as we know it, the Raider Nation. And, and, man, just stay passionate about this team, man. This team is, is worth loving. It's worth supporting. And, and we got good days ahead of us. So so just keep keep the faith, Raider fans. It's going it's, it's, being a Raider fan is, is 
it takes a lot of character. <laughs> it takes a lot of character to be a Raider fan because we've had some tough, tough struggles over the years. But the being being true is going to pay off for all of us, and, and we don't want to give up before you know before the glory days come back. So so don't give up. Keep the faith and. And just go Raiders, man. Just keep that keep that spirit in your heart all the time, man. And that's what I would tell any Raider, you know, new Raiders, old Raiders, you know, just keep the faith, man, and keep 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 the passion because we're gonna we're gonna get where we want to be, and it's coming soon. All right. Um, well, thank you so much, Mop Boss. Now, before I let you go, uh, is there any like promotion, like any social media that people could hook you up? Okay. Um, you guys can reach out to me on my mob boss page. There's a greater mob boss on Facebook. There's also Raider underscore mob underscore boss on Instagram. And those that know me personally, um, you can reach out to me on Facebook as well as, uh, under Kevin Guilford and, and we'll, we'll get you there too. So, so those are the places you can reach me. And if you can't reach me there, reach me at one of these events or at, uh, at, definitely at a Raider game. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, hopefully I can't wait to go to the, uh, explosion. I know you send us the two tickets for the, uh, event, so I'm not really sure for me, you know, there's no plans for me right now. Yeah, well, well, I, I had a, I had a pretty good conversation with your mom and I sent the tickets out to your mom and, and she kind of assured me that you're going to be there. So I can't wait to see you, buddy. Awesome. Uh, would you like to give me a go Raider sound? the time one two three go raiders all right thank you thank you my boss you're so welcome art man i really appreciate you having me on man thank you so much all right thank you all right raider nation that was my boss man he's just a fantastic person that i ever met in my life yeah, like just like he said, you know, just keep the passion, keep the faith, you know, all the things will come to you, Raider Nation. Uh, yeah, for like, you know, he's going to be bringing out MC, uh, for dub and anybody in the Raider fans would be attending to the Raider Nation explosion. So can't wait for that. All right. Well, uh, that's that's all we got for today, Raider Nation. So Fourth uh, of July is coming up for the uh, Independence Day. So uh, just wanted to congratulate to all the American people that serve the country. Uh, we'll be having some fun with family and stuff, and the explosion to uh, Raider Nation explosion next month. So uh, we can't wait. I uh, just I can't wait to see uh, see everybody reunite with my uh, friends for over years that I'm, I've known as a kid. Um, yeah, to stay positive, true, being passionate with it in the Raider Nation. So, uh, now before I, before I go, um, make sure you hit the like, comment, and subscribe below. You can also find me on social media. I'm on Facebook. It's at Raider Art Production. Um, Twitter, it's at Raider Art 21. Um, and, uh, Instagram, I am at Raider Art dash 21 which I, I don't i just don't often use like instagram stuff like me in general but um i'm more into like twitter and stuff and facebook but uh on facebook you can even uh message me me on the uh on that page so uh at radar productions you can even voicemail me or text me i'll be reaching out to uh fans you know they'll be on on air on my show as well so uh yeah just you know be prepared for that so until then raider nation i'm out uh peace out to everybody uh, stay safe and have a damn great one.